another DIY project going here today. Um, this is uh, for a furnace for an RV. This is um, an older Alpenlite fifth wheel I've got here. And uh, it's got a bad furnace. It's been bad for quite a while. Um, a couple of years. When it when it went out originally I um, decided to just get a catalytic heater to put in it and uh, that's worked fine. Uh, the only problem with it is it just dumps tons of uh, humidity inside the inside the rig and that's just not good for it. I mean uh, things are rusting and warping and <laughs> probably wasn't a good move but um, it's not too bad yet so I'm going to fix the furnace here and, and go back to that and possibly put in a uh, vented heater later. So um, anyway, I thought I'd just uh, do a little video here on the process. So this is a Suburban SF30 furnace, uh, 30,000 BTU. And um, when it worked, it worked great, but then all of a sudden it just quit, wouldn't ignite. And um, anyway, I'm going to show you the process here. The furnace is behind this panel, and um, I'm just going to pull these out of here. Normally these would be screwed in here. I've already pulled the screws out. Just pull this out. And uh, this piece here comes out, and the whole panel comes off. And there's the, there's the furnace there. So getting this out of here is... Uh, pretty easy. Uh, sort of depends on the rig you have and where it's mounted in the rig. Uh, on this one, uh, it's, uh, it's right in the cargo area and what you're going to need is you need access to this side of it over here because you're going to need to disconnect the uh, propane line that goes into it and there's also four wires that need to be disconnected. And um, once you get those done, all you need to do is uh, pull this screw out right here. Uh, that's the only thing really holding this in here. Um, and once you get that out, it'll pull right out. Okay, here's the uh, side of my panel here. The furnace is right behind here, so I've got to remove this wall, um, which you know I've already done, but I'll just put it back in place so you can see how it goes. I've got this uh, fuse panel here that I had to take off, so just four screws holding that in. And uh, pull that off and we just get it up here out of the way. And uh, then there were a bunch of screws holding this panel in, so I removed those and just pull this out. And that gives you access to the furnace, to the side of it. Now, what I have to do here is disconnect this, uh, that propane connection right there, and then these four wires. And coming out of the furnace, you can see the four wires. You've got two blue wires, a yellow, and a red. That was the cat, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> I should probably say that uh, I disconnect the power before I before I start doing this. Just don't want anything shorting out. Not that it would anyway, because the uh, thermostat is off. But just just to be safe. All right. So those four. They're all connected, disconnected now, and so uh, now I just need to disconnect the propane line. Okay, and obviously I turned the propane off and uh, bled the lines out um, before I started this. I just turned on all the burners on the stove and let it run until it uh, 
but I'll just tell it was out of propane after turning the valves off. Now on this one, <clears throat> I've got an adapter here. Um, this uh, apparently this line did not connect right up to this, so somebody put an adapter on there to make it fit. But I've got to remove that adapter too because it's going to hit the side of the box when I try to pull the furnace out, unless I remove it. And you can get at that from the inside too. But uh, okay, so this connected wire is disconnected. Should be able to pull it right out now. Okay, I forgot that I've still got to take this screw out of here, so I'll do that right now. Okay, now that that's out, it should just pull right out of there. Just wiggle it. Now, as you can see in there, all this, uh, the openings for the duct work and all that, uh, they are really not connected to the furnace directly. So you don't need to mess with those at all when you pull the furnace out, which is kind of nice. Okay, uh, now I'm just going to uh, identify some of the parts on here so you can see where everything is. Um, you probably heard of the sail switch. And that is this right here. And uh, what happens is when the fan turns, you can see this is the squirrel cage here. When that's turning, it generates a lot of wind. And that will push this up and uh, close that switch in there so that electricity can flow through the switch. This is my old one. So this is what it actually looks like here. And um, this was bad. And uh, the way you can test it is just get an ohm meter, uh, connect, put it on ohms, and connect these two terminals here, and uh, push the switch up. You should uh, you should have continuity, and uh, release it, and you should have nothing. You should have no connection at all. And uh, with mine, it just had no connection all the time, whether it was up or down. So I bought a new one and put it in there. It goes in real easy. It's just two screws that hold it, hold it in. And uh, so that's a real easy fix. You, you don't even need to pull the furnace or anything. You can just access this right from the front there if that's your problem. Now, that was part of my problem, but it wasn't the whole problem. Uh, so right above it here is the... Uh, that's the time delay. And uh, as you probably know, when you first turn your your heater on, the blower will start, but you won't uh, have any heat for a while. And uh, it's what it does is it goes through a series of checks, and it checks to make sure that the sail switch is open before it starts up, and it checks to make sure that the limit switch is uh, is not triggered, and that that switch just makes sure that it's not overheating. If it's too hot, that that will trip trick or uh, trip the limit switch. And the limit switch is on the back. I'll show you that. That's the limit switch right there. And uh, so it checks that, and if that's okay, then it will uh, start the fan up. And uh, then it checks again the limit switch, or I mean, sorry, the uh, sail switch to make sure that it's now closed and it's got an open or a closed connection there so it knows that it's getting enough air blowing through it before uh, allowing the uh, allowing the uh, fuel the propane to flow through the uh, the valve and that is the propane valve right there so uh, it'll open the valve allow propane to flow and then uh, once all that's happening, it will uh, try to ignite, and uh, the ignition, the uh, electricity to power the piezo ignition comes through this control board. This is a control board here, and this is the uh, coil here that generates that electricity, 
and this is the wire that goes to the electrode or the igniter uh, that's in the combustion chamber. So it will send a pulse of electricity through here. The wire goes under here, through the, up under here, and comes up here and goes into the combustion chamber here and it will spark in there right above the burner and then that will ignite uh, the furnace and allow the allow it to heat up and and heat your your rig but that you know that's assuming everything's working correctly <laughs> so anyway uh, now I'll pull this apart here and show you what it looks like in there Okay, oh, this just pulls off just like this. Okay, here's a, you can see here that the propane will come in here and it gets blown out of this jet right here. And it's got a little orifice there. You want to make sure that orifice is clear, not blocked with anything. And uh, also, you're going to check inside your combustion chamber here. And uh, if you need to replace the uh, igniter, this is the igniter right here. And uh, you can see that it's positioned right above the burner there. And that is supposed to be one eighth of an inch gap between the burner and the, and the igniter there. But uh, if you need to remove that igniter, uh, you've got to take the burner out and I'll show you how that goes here. So you remove this piece here. There's just two screws there holding that in. Okay, there's one of them. And the other one Twist it out of there, I think. Twist it like that and it'll come out. Okay, now, got some more screws to get out of here. Um, these two here. Okay, then you got two in the bottom here. Okay, now at this point you can just, you want to uh, try to get feed some line through here for this igniter. So uh, actually you better disconnect it from the coil first. Just pulls right off. Then you can pull it through this side. You may have to go underneath first and make sure it's not uh, zip tied to uh, more wires under there. but. I've already done that, so uh, then you can just push it through here, get you some slack there. Then you should be able to pull this out back this way, and out it goes. Now you've got another mount point in here, but you can leave that in there because uh, it you can get by it. Uh, getting this out and also getting it back in. And now you pull the wire out of there and it goes through there and then there's another uh, rubber piece here that it has to you have to pull it through. Also when you put this piece back on later. As you can see there's a gasket on the bottom of it and uh, it's kind of torn up and, and so I've got a new gasket on order but uh, you, you gotta make sure that that's sealed up because if you put this back on here and there are leaks in there that 
carbon uh, carbon monoxide can get blown into your rig when this thing is heating and carbon monoxide kills people so you do not want that happening anyway get those last two screws out of there so now to pull the igniter off of here the screw that holds it on is on the bottom side of this thing here and all you got to do is pull that screw out And you can just loosen it and it pulls right off. So, there's the igniter. I'm still waiting on my uh, new one because I'm pretty sure... I'm really not sure if this is bad, but uh, it's either the igniter... Well, actually, I know my control board is bad because I looked at it when I pulled the heater out before and there is a uh, one of the electrical components in here that was broken and uh, it had three connections on it and only one connection was was connected into the circuit board so uh, I just ordered a new a new uh, board and I'm waiting for that to show up and uh, when it does we will continue with this all right, the new parts are here, so we'll go ahead and put them in. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this control board. And uh, there's two screws that will do that. And one is right there in the back, another one right down here. Okay, now we need to remove the connector here. And then we'll put the new board onto this uh, metal holder here. Okay, this uh, it's got three nuts holding it on here. Now we'll reconnect the wire and uh, put this thing back back in there. Okay, so that's in there. Now, uh, now we'll put the igniter in. Okay, I ran into a little problem here. Uh, this new igniter is different than the old one. Uh, this is the old one. You can see the the pretty big size difference there. And uh, as a result, it won't fit in here correctly because of this piece here. I had to modify it a little bit. I cut the end, the corner off of this piece here. And what I'm going to do is mount it up on this hole here. So it will then be able to fit in here and then the electrode will be right there where it's supposed to be. Okay, we'll go ahead and put this back in now.
All right, I think that's uh, I think that's pretty good. And uh, now I know I got just got to make sure I can get that uh, that fin in there still. So check that out right now. This piece back on. Okay, I've got that all installed there. I just ran the uh, wire down underneath and got it plugged in here to the coil. Now, before I put this, uh, before I put this piece back on, I'm going to go ahead and hook it up and see if uh, see if it's going to run without any propane, of course. But uh, all you got to do to do that is hook up this uh, red wire to a 12 volt hot and the yellow to a 12 volt negative and uh, just tie these uh, blue wires together and that will, that's just what the thermostat does when it calls for heat. It just closes the connection so We'll do that right now and see what happens. There we go. The light comes on, that means it's got power. I'm going to look in here. Wait for a spark. Alright. That looks good. All right, now I'll just connect this back up. All right, so now it just slides back in there. And put the hold, that hold down screw back in there. Now I'll reconnect the propane line. First the adapter. Now I'll reconnect these wires. All right, I just turned the propane back on, and now I'm going to spray a soap solution on that connection there to make sure I don't have any propane leaks. I don't see any bubbles, so that's good. I think we're good here. Okay, we are ready for the test here, and uh, I'm just going to turn this on to heat. Okay, it's firing up. Yeah, just wait a minute, and it may not start right up because of that propane being disconnected, but we'll see what happens. You can see the green light in there. That means we've got power, which is obvious. When it turns red, that'll mean it's opening the fuel valve. It's trying to ignite, I can hear it. Ooh, it almost went. I heard, I heard something. It'll try again in a second here.
<laughs> oh, that sounds good. We have heat. Oh, yeah. Yep. Boy, it's been a long time since this thing has run. Okay, well, I'm sure glad to hear that. And uh, another successful DIY repair job here, so it seems. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, and I uh, hope this was able to help you out.